When it comes to getting parts for your project car, your daily driver, or your partner's Mazda 3, gone are the days where you have to call up Uncle Bob and go and get the parts yourself. Today on the Skid Factory, we're down at ACM Parts and we're gonna check out some modern day dismantling and recycling. Welcome back to the Skid Factory. We're here at ACM Parts on the Gold Coast at Southport. We've come down to pick up an engine, which we'll talk about later, it's pretty cool. But we've arrived here right on smoke -o time. The boys are, are down having some salmonella sal snacks. So we're gonna take advantage of, of a bit of quiet and show you around how modern auto recycling works. There's no line in the mud underneath a, a, a scissor jack here. We're gonna check out how it's done in the modern era. The old saying is, the price of man in motion is the occasional collision. It happens all the time, and sometimes the cars are written off and can't be used again, and that's how they end up here, getting stabbed by that big forklift. ACM Parts is an excellent example of how modern auto recycling works. Gone are the days of cars stacked 10 high in a paddock where you go and get your own parts, fill your pockets with fuses and all that sort of stuff. Uh, that just can't happen anymore. We've got environmental concerns, uh, oil pouring out of cars into the, into the waterways and stuff like that. No one really wants that and they don't, we don't want that for our kids to deal with in later generations. So there's been a big push for uh, a change in the way auto recycling is done and uh, ACM is pretty much at the forefront of that. They've got these big dismantling facilities. The cars come in from auction after they've been damaged. The insurance company's written them off. They're then sold to uh, companies like ACM that then dismantle them and resell the parts. So they come in here, they get uh, sort of held out the back here. You probably notice that there's not that many cars out the back. They've got big racks there. That's from a previous uh, you know, generation of, of when this was another type of wrecking yard. They used to keep cars for years and years on those racks and uh, there's no real point to it. So these cars come in and they pretty much get uh, processed in the same day. So for example, we've got a, a Ford of some description here. Someone has run out of talent or got run over by a Ranger with a six inch lift it's from, if it's from the Gold Coast. Maybe it got sideswiped by the jet ski that was on the back of the Ranger. Not sure, that's for the courts to decide. But you can see it's been loaded up on the hoist and the, the dismantle that it's working on it is got a list of parts, uh, what we need off this car. So you can't pull every single nut and bolt off a car. The, the, the items just aren't saleable, so they have no real use except for scrap metal recycling. The guys get the list, they pull everything off it. Usually it's engines and transmissions, of course, but you get, if there's any panels that are still any good after the jet skis hit it, they are removed. Stuff like headlights and taillights are, are big items for uh, general damage. So they're pulled off also. They even have, uh, even if we've got slight damage to headlights and taillights, like little metal, little plastic tags broken off, they're still kept because they're still a valuable item. They're then shipped off to another company that actually refurbishes them. Um, this is, uh, it's much better to do that than make a new one in China and send it over here just to fit. So, um, it's got some mad camber on this one too, it's pretty sick. It's got no wheel nuts on it, that's right. Oh why. yeah, there you go. Maybe, that's a, maybe you could do that if you wanted to do some mad camber on your... What, just get some tape it? Yeah, just put like six washers on the bottom and none on the top. <laughs> so we got the obvious stuff like engines and trans, they're pulled out if they're in good order. Um, a lot of the cars would still be running, of course, when they get here. So they're catalogued, put on pallets, and um, there's another facility that warehouses it nearby. Um, so only dismantling is done here, there's, there's no warehousing. Uh, it sort of keeps everything nice and clean and, um, and everything separate, so they're not sort of stepping on top of each other. Uh, panels are taken off, doors, guards, whatever works. There's a, a packing bay over here where, that, where they're quality checking the panels on site then wrapping them for to protect them. That way they've got the documentation that 
when this pedal was wrapped, it was okay because as soon as you chuck that into Dodgy Brothers Courier van and it gets kicked off the side of the van at high speed, it may get a dint in it. And obviously these guys don't want to be uh, responsible for that. <laughs> no offense, Dodgy Brothers Couriers. Let's go around and have a look and see what's in this thing. I'm sure it's an amazing piece of engineering. This is the dismantling report that comes in for the car. Um, it's got a list of the usual stuff plus some uh, other items that are required. Uh, they've got a, a computer system that documents all the arrivals and everything and also what has sold on a car like this in the past. So they know that that right rear door handle might need, it might be a part that, that is required a lot. So that comes up on this report, they remove that. Uh, if they've never sold an engine for one of these, it's probably gonna get pulled and just put out the back and they are then moved on elsewhere. Sometimes they're exported overseas. I did see a green top barrow over there. It's definitely heading for uh, the USA where it's gonna make 900 horsepower all motor. A big part of the recycling process is asset recovery. So stuff like batteries, catalytic converters, wiring looms, Everything that can be salvaged and resold on is kept. Stuff like fuel, so the fuel will get drained from the cars. The diesel is reused in all the forklifts they have on site, as well as they've got petrol forklifts. And other stuff like the um, oil and the rest of the unleaded gets sold on to be recycled. Other liquids such as coolant is considered as industrial waste. So it is drained and stored, and then it is processed via a third party. Once all the engines and or transmissions have been removed from the vehicles, they are pressure washed and inventoried ready to go onto another warehouse. We're just at one dismantling site today. The other warehouse, everything is stored, ready for you to call up the call centre or go on the website to buy your engine, transmission, diff, whatever you need. As Al said, everything gets recycled and the most common parts, so if you need a door handle for a D40 or a, or was the other one, a window reg for your Nissan Duales, they've got them in stock because they know they fail. Uh, we're here today to pick up a special engine, which is right at the back here. Some of you, if you watched our live stream, you might know what's going on. This is what's up. Coyote, five litre. And it's going in my fair lane. Uh, we don't know when that project's gonna happen, so stay tuned for that, but I'm very excited. Gonna say a huge thanks to ACM for having us today and showing us around. It's really cool to see what actually goes on these days when it comes to recycling a car, because it's very impressive. Nothing goes to waste. So thanks again to ACM Parts for having us. If you're interested to get in contact with them, acmparts.com.au or give the call centre a call. All the details are in the description. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. I'm keen to get that Cody into the fair lane. Just, I'll keep with you. Are you recording? Yeah. Got to keep a bit of a pace. Ah, uh, Ah, uh, I forgot my line. All good. Go again. Go. When it comes to getting parts, smoke go truck. <laughs>
You know I love a harrop. What about both? I also love a turbo. Can we, can we compound? Can you compound with a harrop? Is that a thing we can do? You can, but only if you like to make yourself, your life hard. Well, I know you like doing that, so. I don't. I'm yeah, you do. You're too old for that. <laughs> That mighty fine Ecotech. Don't see many of those around in anymore. Wash your mouth out, oh, bro. No, it's an alloy tech. Yeah, alloy Ecotech tech. is the OG. You love a, you love a, you love an alloy tech. No one loves an alloy tech. Just want to say thanks to the guys that are working in the shop here for letting us turn the radio off for a couple of hours. We know how important that is in a workplace like this. Uh, and also happy early knockoff Friday. Enjoy your afternoon, fellas.